All right, I'm just jumping into it. Whoa, <laughs> wait a minute, hold up, girly. I wasn't ready for that. She just popped up out of the anyway. All right, it's day 10. Let me stop messing around. I'm in a really, really good mood. I'm very, very silly right now. So um, let's just go ahead and rock and roll. If you've been here before and someone already put it in the comments, I need your word. I pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. Well, if you were here for day nine, then you know that it is all about the metrics, metrics, metrics. Essentially, what are metrics? Because someone's like, what are metrics or metric? It's your numbers. Every business lives and breathes by its numbers. If your numbers are funky, your business is funky. So part of the exercises was for you to flesh out your numbers. Because um, if you've been here since day one, you should be have at least 50 people on your list. Everyone knows 250 people. I don't even care if your name is Yard Bird um, Yield. You know 250 people. So you should be able to get 50 to get on your list unless you were just completely unfortunate looking or completely misfortunate, whichever the case may be. But you cannot take the metrics of your business lightly. This is something that you really, really have to put some effort into and you really, really have to stay on top of because if you are not really on top of your numbers, you're not really on top of your business. Your numbers are the internal mechanism of your business. That's what makes it run. I mean, it's not your logo. It's not your branding. All that stuff is nice and it's necessary, but without the proper numbers, it's just like, yeah, wasn't that the company that was in business last month? Yeah, pretty logo. You see that all the time. So don't get too invested in logos and all this other stuff. All right, now, since this is day 10 and the goal, and we have, you know, uh, RC has crushed 16 G's gross sales. Let me put that again 16 G's. That is 1,000. 16,000, no, 1,000, $16,000. Okay, I'm being stupid. And he did that since and he's been here every day. So he is the uh, on the leaderboard. He would be number one and in the money. And he just took some of these principles and increased his business. Now he has a business and he's a consult client. So I know him very well. And he's just doing the things he needs to do because. There are many of you, you have a business, you're doing eBay, you're doing Amazon, you're doing Etsy. You can go ahead and crank your profits, but you've got to go ahead and format your business. And that's what this course is about. So just letting you know, we're, we're about to <laughs> crank it up a few notches. Bam. Like I said, I love this new, this bullet is coming for you. It's almost like a full metal jacket, big penis in the sky, except it's your friend. Uh, this is your exercise tonight. I want you to think of a snazzy name for your business. Create a survey about your products and send it to your list. Just um, saying, hey, do you like my product? Hey, do you want more? Would it be better for you to buy three, four or five? Would it be you know, just two or three questions? Send it out and see the response and see which um, question gets the most response because you can do something called sampling, like say you sample 100 people, 50, 100 people, and out of 50 people, 70% says yes to this. There's a very good likelihood that the rest of the population will follow suit. Not always the case, but a very good likelihood. So that's a good way for you to get some really good intel for your business doing surveys. So think of that snazzy name because, you know, we are <clears throat> day 10. Now you can start. Before you can cook, you need some meat on the bones, right? Um, now you have something to work with. If you've been here since day one up to day nine, you have some ideal of your business. You have some customers. You've made some sales. Now we can do the thing that many people want to do on day zero, which is, you know, start all that pretty stuff. But essentially, you're building power now. You, you're, you're getting stronger and you're getting more confident. I've had numerous post emails, comments on Facebook, like just take the hugging exercise. 
One person actually has a date this weekend from the hugging exercise. I'm very proud of him. I am so freaking proud of him. Uh, we have RC. He's at 16,000. Um, before that, there was another person that did 1,300. So here in day 10, we've had people who've exceeded, one person exceed the 2,500 bucks in 30 days. This person might do 50 in his next 30 days or maybe even 100 grand. Just depends. So as you are formatting and systematically looking at your business from a different standpoint, you're getting stronger. Now, what I'm showing you is called the overhead press. Now, what's really funny about this exercise is it will give you stronger abdominals than all the crunches in the world. I know uh, it's a core exercise. It's, um, it looks like it's a shoulder exercise, but it works everything in your body. And when I started doing those, my core got stronger. My posture became better. And that's what I want you to do. Get to the core of your business, those activities, those methodologies, those things that actually make money. Because once you get that core strong, it's like everything else will follow suit. You could call your business Boo Boo the Fool Incorporated and you will be making money. Not to mention you have an instant conversation starter at any party. Now, as you, uh, you're building your reps and you're strengthening your core, realize there are people who are taking this course. They don't have a business. They have an ideal. They have a thought of somewhere where they want to go. And this course will help you with that because day one through 10 was for you. You know, come up with some ideals. You know, there'll still be more stuff. But like I said, we are getting ready to uh, pump this baby up. It's going to move a little bit faster. It's going to be a little deeper. It's going to be even more fun. Now, this is what we're going to do. Since you are here, now it's time to do the action plan. Notice I struck out business plan. It's about action. This course is geared for action. Every day, there's something for you to do. If you do the things that are in this course and you do them, even not every day, if you just systematically go through this course and do everything, all of these things, you will be successful. Now, I have this saying, most business plans are like Moby Dick, great works of fiction. Because if you take your business plan and you go out and you just start doing stuff, you're doing things based on assumptions, unless you have intimate knowledge of the business. It's just pretty much, well, I assume this, I wrote down this number and you're going for it. Now here at day 10, you have something called meat. You have data, you've kind of have some experiences, You've actually may have looked at your business and said, mm, no, Willie, I don't want to do that because you've been pushed to examine it because this is something, this is a true story. A friend of mine for five years had this idea of this business. It was just going to do this business, business cards, had it up on her vision board and all this other stuff. When she finally got into the business, she couldn't stand it couldn't stand the things that were required of the business. She only liked about 10% of the business and she focused all of her hopes and dreams on that 10%. It wasn't pretty. And that's another thing that you can do with day one through 10 is validate flesh out your business because this is the beauty of this. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. You didn't invest any money. If you follow the rules, you didn't buy a web. You, 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 you just went out with your ideal and said, hey, world. And the world said, yo. And the world said, uh, yeah, I like that or not so much. And you didn't spend any money. <laughs> see, that's the thing. You don't have to spend a lot of money to see if your business will work. This isn't like 1997 where people were throwing two, four, five, six, ten millions at an ideal because it's had dot com at the end of it. It's not like that anymore. And now that you really have these this information, you can create a killer action plan. Because anytime you just like start a business with no numbers, no feedback, nothing, it's all assumption. And that's very, very dangerous. And yes, this is another task for the day. So you're going to sit down tonight or in the morning and craft your business plan. Now, part of that's going to be some things you will not do just while you're like doing you do not build a website until you have paying customers there's no need for you to build a website now this is the thing i'm gonna affiliate with blue house if you were gonna hit, go ahead and hit me up for a link i would make some money off your ass and i'm telling you do not build a website until you have paying customers and this is why 
you can go ahead and craft a website that will not suit your business. Then you have to go back and revise it later. Whereas once you get customers, once you get the flow of your business, once you get how your products are serviced or delivered, then that's going to give you valuable information to build your website. And really with Facebook, YouTube, Gumroad and other payment uh, things and Square, you don't really need a website if you've got a really solid idea. You can have like a blog or something, you know, to for your customers to come check out. And it's only going to be like the top 10 10, 20 percent of your customers who would even like, oh, there's a blog. Let me go check it out. So most people are not even going to look at it. But once again, this is talking about core when you're doing core business. And it's just kind of funny that here it is in 2014. You can have an Internet business that makes you a lot of money and you don't have to have a website. We will talk about websites and we'll talk about their presence, because when I went through my experience on the social media day, I learned a lot. Because the thing is, think of yourself and how you shop. You go look for it, you find it, and you buy it. Sometimes, you know, you may do some research. It really really depends on what it is. It really, really does. But part of your business plan should not include doing a website until you have paying customers. Once you get paying customers, hey, hey, G, let me hit that uh, hosting link so I can put a little change, put some coins in your coffer. Okay, at that point, do it. But now, don't do it. Make sure you get your customers. Now, obviously, if you have to have the website for your business to function, you have to do it. And send me that email tonight, and I'll send you the link. But if you do not, and you will go through the validation process, you'll ask people, you'll, you'll ask your friends, you'll ask strangers. And if you can get money out of people without a website, Continue to do that until it becomes cumbersome, because it becomes a problem. Then at that point, guess what? You have the money for the website and the hosting that was produced by the business. Do not print up business cards until you have paying customers. Get their email and phone number. This is one of the things. Uh, I get hit with this all the time. Uh, Conundrum Publishing, which is now Conundrum Medium, has been in business since 2009. I still don't have any business cards. I know, and it, it, it's so funny. I go out and meet someone, and it's like, well, how could I contact you? What's your Facebook? What's your email address? What's your phone number? You want to be in control of the relationship. If they're in control of the relationship, you don't have a relationship. This is what's going to happen. You'll meet someone. You'll chat them up. Give them your card, right? Then they may have a need that you could fulfill And they still won't call you because you have not created a relationship. You have not impressed upon them because say you meet them now, it's February and say July, they have the need for your services. At that point, they forgot who you were and they go to Google or, you know, whatever other source they have. And then, you know, they'll come across your car two, three months. Oh yeah, that guy, that guy, that girl, business cards don't sell Jack. You don't need them. Now, at some point, you can get them. And this is the reason to get them. Like, say you're going to trade shows. Those people will, you know, they'll take your business card. They'll call you back. Uh, You're going to meetups. You're going to conventions, things like that. Then, yeah, they make sense. But I would still go ahead. If I meet someone really cool at a convention or a trade show, I would be sure to get their email address and phone number. Because right now you have your phone on you. Facebook. Hey, I'll friend you on Facebook. What's your name? And do it because they can give you their Facebook name. And then you go in there and you find out there's like a Melvin, there's a million Melvin, the cats up there. It's like, well, he said, Melvin, the cat, here's Melvin Lewis cat, Melvin Percy. Cat. You, you're like lost. Also confirm when you're in their presence, it's just your Facebook. It's just your email. Get their phone number. You want that stuff more so than the business card, because once you get their Facebook or your phone number, their business may change. Their card may change, but That phone number and that Facebook's not going to change. And this is a biggie. I get this question all of the time. Do not incorporate. Do not create a limited liability company. Do not ask Corp until you have paying customers. Unless you have a strong game plan. Let's go through the numbers on this because we will talk about incorporation more, but it's still too early. There is this false notion that you have to incorporate or get a business license to be legit. Unless your state or city has a code that says if you're operating business, you need a license. Okay. But if they don't have that, 
or the language is ambiguous, guess what? Don't do it. Because once you ink, once you do an LLC, once you do an S Corp, you you're on the radar. Now, the thing is, it's not bad being on the radar, but if you're on the radar, you're not making any money. What's the point in going through all that filing stuff and spending that money? My friend with the cookie business, cookie business was rolling for six months before she got her LLC. Because, you know, like I said, she's about fifteen hundred bucks a month. So her LLC, she had it done through an account was two fifty. That money didn't come out of her pocket. It came out of the pocket of the business. That's what you want to do. Another reason is. After a few weeks or months, you may not want to do it anymore. And then what you're going to have to do is dissolve that corporation. The state's going to dissolve that corporation. They're going to charge you thirty to hundred bucks to do so. So don't do that unless you have a real strong game plan and you have to do it because, you know, everyone's like, and there's a lot of things. And we'll talk about that when we get to corporations, because when people think of corporations, they think of not being sued. If you're in a business where no one ever sues anybody, your chances of getting sued are slim to none. Even if you do something stupid, the high cost of filing certain lawsuits prevents people from doing stuff. I've dated a lot of attorneys. One just said it's like no one's suing, everyone's selling because it's just too much money going to court because it's not the court filing fees, it's paying those daggone attorneys. I mean, you can go through a lot of money on a small lawsuit. And when I say a lot of money, 15 to 25 grand, easily easily so if they have that problem and you have that problem of coming up with the money even if they have the right to sue you they probably won't be able to do it and then there's another thing if you live in california and the person you want to sue lives in new york guess what you gotta go to new york unless it's some type of federal deal but that's a whole nother ball game so there is a lot of benefit to having the corporation like i said we'll talk about it but don't do it until you have paying customers and a really strong game plan because all you're doing is just creating an additional headache for yourself. Don't even worry about it until the business is going percolate, 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 and it's putting cash off because many people, and I would really encourage this, is you know go out and fail a few times. Didn't work, learn some lessons. Didn't work, learn some lessons. And you'll get to the point where it's like, oh, it makes sense to do this. Now, I will give you a few exceptions. If you have a business where you're using a vehicle and you're hauling people around and if you get in an accident, of course, they're coming after you. So you want to do that. If you have any type of physical exposure, like you're doing a service, like you're doing carpet cleaning, you might you want to do it. So anything that could put you at risk, like if you're going into someone's home, you're walking someone's dog, anything or someone may be like, you dirty dog. I'm going to sue you, you know, when you're exposing yourself. But if you're doing like an internet business and you're selling stuff on eBay, Amazon, not so much. Now, this is the uh, one foolproof method of validation. If you can get someone to give you their credit card information or give you some, some of that green stuff that folds, that's it. That's your number one validation tool. If you can sell it, the harder it is to get paid, the harder it will become. If you go out on day one and it's real hard to get money, day two is going to get harder. Now, the thing is, if you go through this exercise, you're going to become a better and better salesperson. And when you have really, really good sales skills, you can sell stuff to people they don't need. I've done it. You can do it. But we don't want to do that. We want to sell to be as frictionless as possible, which means that you're providing a service or a product. You can go to Costco or Sam's Club right now and buy some vanilla wafer cookies or no, no, no. Get the ones with the cream, get the cookie, the vanilla creams or the chocolate creams. Put those cookies on a plate and some baggies and put like, you know, 10 cookies in there and charge a dollar for 10 cookies and go stand outside some busy business and you will sell cookies because it's like, oh, there's cookies. They're sweet. My sweet tooth is going. Yeah, baby. It's that easy because you're selling something that you know that a lot of people are going to want. Uh, same thing. You can go to Sam's or Costco on a really hot day, blazing, go on the street corner. Well, get, a, get water because, you know, a case of water is like three bucks. You get 24. Go on the street corner and sell cold water for a buck a piece. So after you, you sell four bottles, you're in the profit. Once again, providing a service or a product that is needed at the desired time. Now, you have to get paid. You have to ask people for money. 
if you ask 50 people for money for something and no one says, uh, yeah, that's telling you something and you need to listen. It's either your price, it's your product or something. There's something that needs to be tweaked or you may have to euthanize the baby. I know that's sad and it was a cute little kid, but you may have to do it because that's what your ideals are. They're babies. And sometimes people become very attached to that newborn and they can't let go. So with that, you have to really, really think about how fast can you get paid? How fast can you get to the core level of your business? Now, this is the big thing, you know, focus. You got to focus, 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 focus. Every day you have to ask yourself, am I doing something that makes money now, later, now, later? It does this what I'm doing. And if the answer is no, the next question is, why are you doing it? I totally get that you may have days that you go to the office where you're not doing any hard work because you were uh, stressed out. I actually encourage um, do nothing lazy days where you just kind of coast, because if you're always going 100 percent, you're going to burn out. And you're going to create problems for yourself. So, you know, there's some days where it's cool where, nah, this doesn't make money. Candy Crush or whatever. You know that Candy Crush game makes damn near a million dollars a day? It's I don't play it. I'm afraid because I don't want to get addicted. But it's pretty amazing. So, continue to get rid of things that don't make money. You know, just it's, it's a process because you'll do something new and it'll create a new set of processes. Then you have to later on look at those processes like, are they valid? Do they make any sense? And that's the ongoing matriculation of your business. The same things that I'm giving you is the reason that I got rid of Urban Pack Rat. And I love Urban Pack Rat. And, you know, people are like, well, just leave it up. It won't hurt anything. Actually, it would. I knew in July 17, 2009, when I wrote started on that first storage auction book, I knew that that book was going to have a shelf life. I rode that pony hard for three years, and now, you know, I've lowered the price. It does okay. I mean, it doesn't sell a lot because everyone knows about the storage auction business. There's not, what, three shows on, and there's all this other stuff, and there's a lot of trash to cash type television on. And I knew it was going to be very short term. So I didn't want to get branded as the storage auction only guy. That's one of the reasons I was like crazy Craigslist stories, business stories, current events. Always did different stuff because you don't want to lock yourself into a position that you may not want to be locked into. If you want to be locked down, clink, clink, I'm locked down. I'm loving it. Fine, go for it. But I knew that I wanted to do other stuff and I positioned myself. And I probably lost some cash. I did because if I had went straight storage auction guy went to the local television shows uh local radio yeah i would have made more money but i would have been typecast as that guy and i really really think i managed it nicely because this is the beauty of starting a business if it doesn't work out or it has a shelf life once you learn those skills you can start another one and another one and another one and another one because Certain skills are just transferable and they don't go away. Another task, because <laughs> I know some of you have not done it and I'm coming for you. And the big penis in the sky is actually in front of me. See, you thought I was going to say it was behind me, but there is no big penis in the sky behind me. It's always in front of me. Today, you're going to set a daily income goal. I don't care if it's two bucks, five bucks, whatever. Set the goal. You can always scale it. Then go do a weekly, a monthly, and a quarterly. And why not annually? If you're doing quarterly, um, that's going to kind of take care of the annually. And you want to really sharpen your focus on where you're going and what you want to do. Because the simple fact of this stuff in this today, you know, day 10, you do this. You know, if you just go through 1 through 10, you should be able to hit your 2,500 within 60 day, 30 days or 60 days. Starting from scratch with nothing. Now, day 11 through 30, we're going to get into some more advanced techniques. But this is your another task for you to do today. And booyah, we are going to uh, get into the questions. Hey, what's going on, Catherine? Glad you're here. Uh, I am a Google head like everyone else, Camilla. Ooh. 
<laughs> I have to go back. Uh, they'll be they'll be in the thirty days to twenty five hundred dollar Facebook group. Okay, this is Alicia. What about text business cards? I meet someone and they ask me to send a text to a five digit code, then I receive their business info. I mean, that's just digital information. That's you're still getting their phone number if they text it to you. So that's a win. Uh, this is Tracy. I had an express breakfast business in the 90s and sold bagels, juices, pastries, etc. to businesses in Seattle. Everything was from Costco. This led to a catering business. I did this when I was first starting in real estate. It worked very well for me. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, you could go to Costco right now, look around, find some stuff and sell it. Okay, you lost your internet connection, but the next connection is fine. I don't know what that means. Okay. All right, I'm going to wait. It seems to uh, be a little lag today. Because I know I'm still on. Because uh, I'm getting feedback. I used uh, Survey Monkey once. I actually used the survey that's attached to get response right now. I don't do too many surveys. Uh, one of my techniques is I do videos as surveys. I put up a video and just judge the response, and that kind of leads me down the path. But I think Survey Monkey's free, so yeah, go for it. Uh, this is Chris. Uh oh, we've got another one. Making money while listening to you, Glennon. Got to run to the post offices and mail packages. I'm up to twelve hundred bucks since starting. Day ten, and he's almost at the halfway point. Runny Blackman, what is the best way to find liquidated and wholesale merchandise? Number one, Google. Go to wholesale merchandise websites. Call up stores such as Walmart, uh, Best Buy, and find out where they have their liquidation. Some of the places do it themselves. Some places have services. There's guides you can buy. Just let your uh, fingers do the walking and then on the uh, on Google. Uh, Princess, do you have any tips for dealing with somewhat sour post office employees? Should I spread out my eBay drops off to different post office? Uh, actually, no. Princess, do you know that if you have a lot of packages, you can set up where the postman comes to your house and picks them up every day? And even if you're not home, you can just like say they're by the garage. Well, I don't know about your neighborhood, um, but we got to the point where they came to pick up stuff every day. We would leave like a bin out to let the postman know if they had packages or if he didn't see any bin, there were no packages. So you don't have to. Now, if you've got to go to the post office, uh, one technique is to walk in and be super pleasant because a lot of people are like, I hate them. Or just go by Costco, get a pack of cookies and just say, hey, you know, you guys have been so nice for me. Here's some cookies. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Krispy Kreme crack. Just take a few dozen Krispy Kremes by there. Make sure they know you brought them and uh, they will love you a long time. But see, you, you can't give it to one person. You got to give it to everybody because the post office is worried about that. Uh, Michael talks about check out the Cam Car Business Reader app. Lets you send your business cards to others with them having them in your without having them in your pocket. Okay. Uh, Brian, I've had success putting out Craigslist wanted ads for out of business retail merchandise. All day long is on there. Uh, Manny, this is helping me get the DJ fans and event goers for, uh, for involved with the brands of the numbers are everything. Yeah, I mean you get the numbers right. Especially with a DJ, if you're on top of the business end, because most DJs are artists, but if you really get to the business end, you can make six figures easy. Uh, Aaron, would you ever do a TV show? I will actually give you a little backstory. If I had it on this computer, I would show it to you. I was up for the first storage auction show, and I was very zooted at the possibility. I learned a lot and made some good friends. Then I learned how the business works. Our show was passed over because the guy at the Discovery uh, Networks didn't think it would pass. He eventually got fired. At that one point, I was in a position where I would do a book deal or the TV show. Currently, I will not do a TV show, and this is the reason why. Going back to freedom and intent, 
when you become when you sign those contracts there's there's a lot of stuff about press like if they need you to go to the leatherman show you're going they're going to pay for everything there's no problem with that but the thing is your time is locked up a lot longer than you think it is and for me i like my life the way it is you know uh, i was having a conversation on facebook in a group about writing and you know like i wouldn't want to do a book tour because the way they do it is not it's just like day after day after day and you're saying the same thing to different people but it's the same thing to me it's just a grind I'm really comfortable doing what I'm doing right now because I know I can do this forever. So, no, I wouldn't do a television show. It would be, I'm not going to say never, but it would have to be some serious benefit for me to uh, even consider that. Uh, Richard's got an income goal of twenty five hundred bucks a day, seven seventeen thousand a week, seventy five thousand monthly, and uh, two hundred twenty five quarterly. I think y'all know who did the sixteen thousand. <laughs> uh, Byron. So most of your income is derived from intellectual property as opposed to dry goods. One hundred percent correct. I used to do a lot of reselling on Craigslist, but. I started playing around with writing and there's some things I'm really having fun with that they don't make a lot of money, but going to delay gratification, they can make money in 10 years. And if I get too heavy and resell, um, that's going to kind of go out the window. Uh, Tony, I'm a bit of a computer literate idiot. Where's the link to the... <laughs> You go to the last video up on YouTube. This is 199 bucks. That's lifetime, and that's the monthly. Under every recent video is all of this information. Uh, every day, I just this never changes. This is the same link every day. Only thing I change is this stuff, and then you know that's uh, the donation thing for because uh, you know people stop getting bumped out for some reason. I wonder what happened. And yeah, everything I'm doing is right there. So you're good to go. Oh, okay. Manny's the brains. Uh, when Zuck had the business card, I'm CEO bitch made. Do you think it was uh, it did well to serve his name as his own brand? And I think it was a brilliant move because what he was doing, there was nothing he could do wrong. I mean, it was it suited his personality, it suited the demographic. I wouldn't do anything like that, but for him, it was a win. Uh, Veronica, thank you, Glenda. You really encouraged my brother. I saw a change in his life. I decided to check this out. I'm really excited. <laughs> I want to start a business, but what can I do to look for ideals? Okay, yeah, that was kind of like the first 10 days. Just join the Facebook group and you can go to that stuff at your own pace. And that's pretty cool. That's a, I got a referral. I mean, the brother is, um, that's pretty amazing. Sure, no problem. Uh, just what kind of changes happened in your brother? I, I, I would really like to know. If you can't get me here, you can just like email me. That that's that's awesome. I mean, that's that's a really beautiful thing to say because she saw what her brother was doing and that got her to come in here. That's pretty cool. I'm feeling all warm and fuzzy right now, and I don't even have a kitty near me. Okay. Well, I'm going to discuss the reason the boost in confidence. We live in a society that creates faux or fake self-esteem. You're a good person. You deserve this. When I was in the toilet, my life was in the toilet. And my self-esteem, I was moderately depressed. I wasn't doing shit. And when I started to create stuff and, you know, I'll tell you the story of how I got my first job out of the boarding house. I created, this was before cell phones were ubiquitous. I created, I, there was this company on Norcross where you can, it, it's like Google Google uh, Voice does it for free now, but it was like 30 bucks a month. And you got a voicemail box and it would page your pager when someone called. So I created with this fake Indian voice and then I created these 
You know, it's very unethical what I'm telling you, but I did it anyway. And I created five different resumes to get these jobs. When I got that offer letter, my confidence went through the roof because true, solid confidence comes from doing stuff. Not being told you're good, not saying you deserve this when you really didn't. But when you go out and do something and you change your life and you see impact of your actions with other people, you can't help but be confident. When my when my first book was done, I will be honest to you. I, I sat in the basement in my little chair and spun around with my feet dangling going. Wee! <laughs> I, I still get that little feeling because it was just like, oh, I wrote a book and I was rubbing the book. It was it was a crackhead moment, but I, it, it lives with me forever because writing that first book was hard as shit. I mean, I got headaches. There was times I wanted to give up. And that's where you really get that confidence. And, you know. Some people think I'm arrogant on YouTube, and I don't think I'm arrogant. It's just I have a high degree of confidence because I know that I can make something out of nothing. And there was a point in my life I didn't have those skills. There was a point I got laid off three times in 18 months. I didn't have any money. It was horrible, and I was not really confident, and it took a while. I will give you some tips, and I mention this all the time. Get Earl Nightingale's Lead to Feel. You can get it on Amazon really, really economically and get this book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray. Those two things changed my life. Wow, that's very cool. One of her brothers is autistic, but he's very encouraged by the talks. That's wonderful. Now, I, I will share with you, I'm mildly dyslexic and I had a speech. Well, I still do. I still do because it comes out of times. I spent six years in special ed for my speech problem. So I know how people treat you when you're odd and different. So if you just tell them to keep talking, you know, he a lot of people don't know I have a speech impediment until I tell them or, you know, I sound like I'm drunk sometimes because when I get really tired, it comes out. But that is very, very cool. Thanks for sharing that with me. Byron, I think you're right. I should always have a kitty near me. <laughs> uh, you're right. They're both working on so many projects. Your encouragement, guys, has really helped them. That is very cool. David, being odd and different is an asset. When you're a little kid, you don't look at it that way. You look at it as you're like a leper. But, uh, you know, later on in life, I was able to look at it for the gift it was. But when you're going through it, you can't see that. You just really, really can't see that. This is pretty cool. And also, I'm actually under time for once because I've been going over and over because I'm trying to make these shorter. And because they're going to get more and more intense. It's going to get way more intense because we're going to start talking about sales techniques, Craigslist trips. And all, like, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to come. Uh, Eddie, when you don't have the income to have an expensive look, example, I got a 1979 Chevy work truck I use for work, but my work and workmanship has received many compliments and customers. Simple trick. Take a little money and get your truck painted. Doesn't a 79 truck, get it painted, maybe put some mag rims on it, get them from Craigslist. You might spend like 500 bucks, but the branding effect will be like a $10,000 paint job. I had a 1994 white BMW 5 525i, but it was painted and polished and it had BBS rims on it. I got at least two to three compliments on that car a day. Just make it clean, man. It doesn't have to be new. Make it very clean, make it sexy. And then something else with the 79 truck, you become memorable. Cause it's like, oh, Eddie's that cool dude with that cool truck. Just, just a little paint and some match. You'll be amazed. Aaron, you're my business mentor. Thanks. Uh, Leslie Ann, how far into business did your cookie friend get a commercial kitchen lights? The health department would bear you here without one. Actually, she just went through the process and the government has this thing called cottage businesses where they give you a break on that, where they come in, they inspect your home kitchen and she passed and she got her license. Because it's, it's a cottage industry. You need this to get into certain markets. So, yeah, she went through that. She's not doing commercial yet. She's still doing everything legit. She's got a business license. She's got 
her uh, corporation and permits. She's got everything. But she sold cookies for six months before she even got this far. She just did this stuff this year. So she's rolling. Uh, I told her, you know, she's probably going to be able to kill her this time next year. She probably making half, if not more than her current job income. She's going to be rolling. But that's a good question, because the thing is, um, in the 50 laws of hustling, there's uh, certain laws like don't take anyone's word for it. Find out for yourself, because a lot of people told her that. And I said, find out, because everything is changing. The Internet and the disruption has created a lot of changes in government policy. I mean, honestly, I'm thinking about opening up a weed shop when they come to Georgia, because the trend is. Next five to ten years, I'm going to think 25, if not more states are going to be selling weed. And I was like, and I know being in the South, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, these places are going to be holdouts. They're going to be the last ones to do the, to adapt to the weed. And I'm thinking, huh, maybe I not need to start doing because it's coming. Because one, my my partner actually talked about opening up a liquor store, and it's just it's it's hard work, but it's constant income. But yeah, I might do a weed shop. I've been thinking about it. Uh, Byron, do you think we're in another bubble economy? I think the big bubble right now is education, student loan debt. Housing is going to be second. And what we have is the trickeration of the markets. You know, some people are making money. Most people aren't. I think we're in a very weird place because we have people being displaced from jobs by technology. And we have a group of people who are becoming extremely rich from technology. And it's the have and the have nots. And it's not so much that the haves are rich. It's just if you have a car, decent place to live, food every day, and some money left over after you pay your bills, you're a have. <laughs> because half the country is going through shit right now. So I think we're in a dangerous place. I think what we're going to have is long-term stagnation. We're not going to really have any appreciable growth. And I think they're going to keep it that way for a long time. Like uh, the, the lost decade in Japan, I think that's where we are. <laughs> oh, the Confederate states become so liberal. Some of them have, but Georgia, it'll be the last thing. Manny's in Washington. He's a, he could start a weed shop tomorrow if he wanted to. Uh, Leslie Ann, Washington is going through changes. It's making my life hell at the moment. Weed is huge, but it's still largely done underground. There was um, a news story where the people in Denver are making so much money that they have to have higher armed and hired security to transport the cash because the banks are so afraid that the government's going to come in and do something even though the government said hey you know we's legal we're not going to mess with it because it from a federal level money derived from wheat sales is illegal and it could put the bank in some serious jeopardy so these people are making all this cash and they're handling money like the drug dealers they are it's so cool and a lot of them are getting robbed it's kind of weird uh, Tony, at 50, out of work and suffering a minor struggle about a year ago. I'm positive about my future. Had already started selling whatever I could. Now I feel like I'm more focused. I see how people react differently to me. And this is before I found you. Nice to have a reason to stay up late and get up early. That's very cool. Uh, medical cannabis was just out loud May 1st, and now you can have one ounce wreck and medically two ounces. <laughs> it's kind of crazy what's going on with weed. It really is. Man, the first bank to be okay with working with a weed shop is going to blow up stock wise. It is because they're going to have a lot of money. Eddie Moore. Uh, I don't think the $15 minimum wage increase is coming. Uh, let me bump it to 10. Uh, my thoughts it's going to cause problems because this is me. As a business owner, and you're a business owner, you know, if you have someone at $15 an hour, you know, it's actually 18 to $20 an hour when you factor in payroll fees, insurance, uh, unemployment and workers comp. So this is a huge, huge increase on some businesses. Um, businesses are going to scale back or they're going to consolidate. I think there's going to create less jobs because. That's just saying that, you know, every business is not hugely profitable. There are some businesses running on very thin margins, and this kind of bump will make them change their business, i.e. lay off people. They're going to have to. I don't think it's a good thing. 
I think we need to get away from these arbitrary um, people do go to work, you earn X and Y and Z. I was what 14, 15, making 650 an hour in the 80s because I was working in a sheet metal factory. And that was like twice minimum wage back then. So it just really depends on you. I think it's a bad idea. Really? Weed dispensers are going to be shut down in Washington? Wow, I didn't know that. I thought weed was rolling. But like I said, you know, I'm waiting for it to come to Georgia because I would not move and try to do this because if you go to any state where they're selling weed, you have so many people that are like way ahead of you. They already have the, li the licensing and, you know, I don't even know how to grow weed. I would have to get a weed partner. Okay, I'm going to see if there's any more questions and then I'm going to shut this puppy down. I will be back tomorrow, but there will be no sessions this weekend. If there's a session Sunday, I'll let people know. But as of now, because, you know, I'm looking at what people are watching and people are still catching up. And like I said, this is going to get more and more intense. Now, there's some other stuff that's going on. Hold on. Uh, Deanna, first time I watched your auction video, you provide you provided validation that's changed my life. Glendon, I got it. Mom posted, I'm proud of you. Now it's official. I'm clear. Thank you. <laughs> that's pretty cool. You got your mom proud of you. My mom was like, you know, talking smack. So what you mean to tell me is you still don't have a job? Man, I heard that for a long time. Uh, Manny, how can I engage more fans with Facebook posts? Oh, let me talk about that. What you want to do is get yourself a YouTube channel, get yourself a mailing list, and you create a Facebook page, but do not put any effort into it. Facebook actually has, um, it's actually in a group that there's a lot of funky stuff going on with Facebook. And this is something I discovered when I did my social media experiment that a like is nothing. You really want to, this is what you want to do. You want them to hear the music, know who you are and have a way for, for you to contact them at will. And Facebook, Facebook is not that way. I got a Facebook page. Um, at one point I was doing promoted posts and I'll share some with you. You can spend 40 books, $40 on Facebook and go hardly anywhere. You could take that same $40 and promote it on YouTube and get yourself. Cause I spent last month, maybe $80 and then matriculated into two, about 40,000 more views on my channel. I got 900 and something new subscribers, way more effective. The uh, space for video advertising is it's the wild, wild west right now. There's not a lot of people that are advertising. It looks like it, but they're not. For me to get that kind of traction that quick for just 80 bucks, I mean, I made the 80 bucks back in the AdSense revenue, plus some, um, plus sales, plus new people that never heard of me. So if you're going to do something, advertise on YouTube. Forget Facebook. Do not spend any money on Facebook ads because unless you have a huge spend, it is really not for the small guy. You'll hear all these stories and I will explain how these people are getting huge responses from Facebook. There's a group of people when they work together and they share each other's list. Right now, there's a Marie Folio. She's doing her B-School. Derek Halperin, um, Laura Roder. There's like six or seven people that are promoting her B-School and they're all affiliates because the B-School is $3,000. So I don't know what the breakdown is, but she's on the list of six or uh, that I know of could be 10 people who have lists 50,000 people deep or more. So when you have that kind of list and then you do a, an email and bring them back to your Facebook, that's why your Facebook page looks like it's blowing up. But really, unless it's something like silly, like a cat or some music or guns, Facebook pages just don't organically blow up. Uh, Leslie Ann said that weed is on lockdown right now. I can help with the insurance and out of cooking it and growing when the time comes. I don't use it, but I can cook the hell out of it. I learned so much about my tribe. All right, man. See you tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Eddie's gone. Uh, Victor, do I invest in Go? No. I invest in gaining new skills and creating services and products because this is my take on the meltdown art again. You would be better off having a hundred guns and thousands of rounds of ammunition versus gold. Because if you have that gold, how are you going to protect it? <laughs> Chris is back from the post office. Will the post office pick up your packages even if they're not priority mail? They used to. They used to pick up all our packages every day. 
uh, Dave Salsey. I think I heard Calicananis said once, if you're in someone's email box, you're in their world. I get what you're saying about the email list. Far better than, yeah. Because the thing is, you don't control Facebook or Google+. Plus. You don't control none of that stuff. Um, YouTube's inbox, uh, subscription box is broken. I get, you know, because I subscribe to my own channel and I get like an email like four or five days after the video comes out, all kinds of stuff. So you are definitely want to have that email address. And in the future, it's going to be the phone because mobile marketing is going to be ridiculously huge. Uh, Vine is for six second shot videos and clips. It's the demographic for that is kids. Uh, I have some friends on it. I looked at it, but for what I do, it wasn't effective. So I have an account, but that's one of the things, you know, when you check out the social media video, you're going to find out that being everywhere and doing all this stuff is actually counterproductive. You got to figure out what works for your business, your brand and the stuff that you're selling. All right. It's 450 shutting this puppy down. I will be here. All right. You're welcome, Deb. I'll be here tomorrow. Well, let's see. That's it. I'll be here tomorrow. Y'all have a and I'll see you on the good side.